In this video, I'm going to show you all the prep that is needed uh, before bringing the car to the shop to uh, be able to do a roll cage install. So that car already had uh, race seats, a harness bar, and uh, a removable steering wheel. So the airbag and the steering wheel were already removed on the driver's side. So the first thing I did was to uh, remove the um, seat on the passenger side. And uh, once the seat is removed, you can uh, remove the harnesses. Uh, the harnesses are attached to the harness bar and the uh, other parts of the harness are attached directly to the seat frame. Uh, remove the driver's seat and then uh, we can go and start stripping the inside of the car. So you have uh, good resources on Corvette Forum on how to uh, disassemble the uh, dashboard. So you have to start with the console in the back. You have basically uh, four nuts to remove disconnect the 12 volt uh, plug uh, for the cigar lighter and uh, uh, the uh, traction control connector then you can move the, to the front of the console um, you have a number of uh, bolts one uh, just here to the left of the ignition one behind the um, behind the hash tray and uh, you remove the 12 volt plug and you can go ahead then to remove the dash, you have a number of uh, bolts all around uh, the car. Uh, you can remove first uh, the console under the uh, steering wheel, like I'm doing there. Just have a, a couple of bolts to remove, and then uh, detach the uh, uh, center for the AC there. And uh, then you can go ahead and remove all the bolts around. There are, I think, seven of them around the console uh, to detach the uh, upper part of the dashboard. You can remove the radio. Um, just a couple of um, uh, electrical plug in the back. The coax for the antenna, you just have to pull on it and it, it's going to come straight. Uh, then you have uh, to uh, remove two screws on top here. Um, so if they fall while you remove them, you will only be able to retrieve them once the dashboard is uh, taken out. Um, they are not very accessible because of the windshield being very close. Uh, if you are planning on removing the windshield, you can remove the windshield first. Um, and you can remove the upper moldings. They are just clipped on uh, on each side. So just, just pull hard on them. I mean, go gently, but uh, just pull relatively hard and they will come out. And you will be able to access the remaining screws on uh, on either side. Um, and uh, one more left here on the right. And the dashboard should start to move after that. A couple more bolts to remove. Close the instructions, see if I'm missing anything. No, not completely moving. Uh, and actually, you will see that uh, there are bolts in the, in the glove box there. Uh, and uh, actually, you will have to uh, remove the glove box to be able to access uh, the bolts in the back later on. But here now, the top of the dashboard just comes. Uh, you have to remove also the uh, um, connector to the flashers, and then the whole dashboard is going to come. Okay, so here is the status right now. You can see from the top, uh, we still have the HUD here, and uh, uh, the rest of the uh, uh, HVAC. So the next step here is to remove the carpets. Uh, actually, the carpets are uh, the driver's side carpet is held up by the footrest on the left and uh, the um, stopper behind the gas pedal. Uh, so you have to get to the screws there to be able to remove uh, uh, the carpet. And uh, you remove the stopper, then you can pull the carpet and uh, you can put the stopper back after. 
And uh, on the passenger side, you have to uh, remove the glove box. So it took me a while to figure out that actually, uh, oh, I'm removing first the uh, driver side carpet. There's nothing much to do there. Um, yeah, before you mess up with the uh, airbag, make sure the fuel is removed. I already removed it when I did the driver side, but it's a good thing to double check and making sure everything is uh, disconnected. Even though you disconnected the battery uh, before doing all that, it's good also to uh, remember uh, enabling the, uh, the, uh, the fuse. Then the each rack module is just all by two bolts, and uh, you can remove the plug. Then uh, there is the airbag control module that is down there. If you don't plan to put in back your airbags, uh, you can just remove it. And it's held up by uh, three bolts. They are not very accessible, and it's uh, pretty hard to get in there. But uh, uh, if you have a, a ratchet with an adjustable head, it's, you can get in there and get this airbag module out. Then, uh, to disconnect the airbag, uh, the airbag is actually held by bolts that are uh, under in the glove box. So you have to uh, remove the glove box first. And uh, even though here I'm disconnecting the wire, uh, there are actually two plastic plugs inside the glove box that are hiding two bolts behind it. So when you open the um, glove box, you have to uh, pop out those two plastic caps inside. And you will see behind it, uh, there are two uh, uh, bolts that uh, you can remove. So here I'm just removing the uh, carpeting in the back. and. Uh, uh, that's not necessarily necessary, but uh, finally, uh, when you get access to those two screws behind the plastic caps inside the glove box, uh, the glove, blo glove box is going to come out, and you will have access to the um, uh, boards to uh, the passenger airbag. So here, I just have to remove the connector. Inside the glove box, you have the uh, passenger airbag um, uh, disabling switch uh, that you can leave uh, with the airbag here. And then you can, uh, there are four bolts underneath. I'm uh, putting the wires away. Uh, four bolts under uh, that are just holding the passenger hair back there. So remove those four bolts and the hair back should come. Uh, I'm not planning to put the hair back back, and nor uh, do I plan to keep the glove box. So you can just remove the whole support here. Uh, there are a number of screws that are holding it in place. Uh, it's not necessary to uh, keep the dashboard uh, in place to uh, to keep this piece, so uh, I can just remove that. Um, I'm removing also the uh, uh, vent pipe uh, that goes to the window to defrost the windows on the on the sides. I'm not planning to put those pipes back. And actually, the pipe is hooked up to the uh, uh, to that element there. So I'm just removing all the bolts. Uh, Look around, there are some in the back uh, that are holding the thing in place. And once you get uh, everything out, uh, you can you will get also the uh, vent uh, pipe to the defog the window. There's another pipe going to the driver's side window, same thing, uh, I, I removed it. Um, now, going to the back, uh, I had a harness bar, so the hard bar, a uh, harness bar, so I'm going to remove that. And... Uh, that's going to make uh, another razor happy without a wall cage. And uh, then in the back, I can uh, start removing the speakers and all the wiring. Actually, you won't need, uh, you can suppress the whole uh, wiring going to the back of the car. Um, it is uh, the only two things you are going to miss is the release for the uh, gas cap. Um, this thing that I'm holding in my hand is actually the remote for the um, remote opener uh, for the door. And the other thing you are going to give up if you remove the uh, rear harness is the uh, trunk opening. Uh, you will have to just use a manual release. Um, then you can remove the visor. It's pretty tricky. You have to uh, put the... Uh, once you know the trick, it's easy. But basically, you have to hold a flathead screwdriver inside the, screwdri inside the uh, hole and pry with the uh, uh, sun visor to make it turn a quarter turn so I can release it. Then you know, the roof is going to 
cut off. And uh, so here is the uh, status of all the parts, uh, the dashboard, and uh, uh, all those uh, various uh, components here, uh, the moldings uh, on the side of the uh, of the side of the uh, of the uh, front windshield, uh, the speakers. Uh, um, here, the sun visor, the red footrest, the uh, uh, moldings in the back around the speakers in the trunk uh, have the glove box underneath, and uh, uh, most of those parts won't go back in the car uh, after it's uh, it's modified. Um, so if we look on the inside, we still have to uh, remove the trimming on the doors, and uh, otherwise uh, we are mostly done with everything inside here. Yeah. Um, if we go and look at the back, um, this is where the frame is going to come, is, and that's where I have to cut to put the plates for the back of the uh, of the wall cage. So the fiberglass will have to be cut there. And um, on the inside, I have to uh, put the plates here. The, uh, the frame is here, so uh, multiple plates are going to come to support the uh, NASCAR door bars there. And the frame is just behind the B pillar here, so uh, we can't put anything on the floor there, just bells I would. And uh, uh, so we'll have to do uh, to cut an opening here to uh, put the bar, and the bar will come straight here for the main hoop and uh, be welded directly to the frame just behind that uh, small panel. Um, the wiring harness here will have to go. Uh, that's uh, uh, all the uh, uh, wire harness that goes to the back and that's the uh, uh, box for the wireless remotes uh, that is actually located behind the uh, um, panel for the uh, um, gas tank uh, filler just there and uh, actually if you want to remove the whole harness uh, here the uh, gas tank opening here I have a manual release is a small cable so uh, if you remove the harness you will have to use that manual release here is a cable that you can see here uh, just pull that and that will release the, uh, release the cap and access that easily from the trunk and the same thing if you will remove the uh, uh, rear harness, you won't have uh, opening of the trunk anymore uh, through the button, so you'll have to uh, extend the cable um, to, uh, for the manual release so that you, you can access it from inside the car. If you want to remove the uh, uh, rear harness, you just have to uh, remove the fuse box and pull uh, the whole harness from there. So now we're moving the trim uh, the driver door, you just have uh, two Torx bolts um, in the middle there. Then be careful, pry the uh, uh, small um, deflector in the back there and just pull the whole thing out and remove the uh, wire connector and that's it. Um, if you want to remove the speakers, which is uh, probably something you want to do, uh, they are just uh, five or seven bolts, I don't remember, around. So just remove them, don't miss, there are two in the middle that you won't necessarily see uh, originally. That's what I was looking for there. Um, and uh, then the whole uh, assembly just comes out. There is very little glue, so it should come out relatively easily. We're going to do the same thing on the uh, uh, passenger side. So we move those two torque bolts. Um, then we move the deflector in the back and pull the whole assembly out. Um, it's uh, relatively straightforward. Don't touch the... Uh, nut that is in that hole, that's something to adjust the, uh, the window at the bottom right there. Um, so just, you don't have, besides the two bolts in the middle, you just have to uh, pull the whole uh, door assembly. Then you can uh, remove the bolts for the speaker and, uh, um, and remove the, the plug and just get the speaker out and you're all set. Um, so it's going to take you some time to remove uh, all the wires and the routing to the wires. So here I'm getting the fuse box out. It's just held by basically one bolt, uh, one nut, sorry. And uh, then you can get the, uh, the whole harness out by just pulling the whole harness at the bottom of the fuse box. The big next step is to remove the gas tanks, and uh, that's probably the most painful uh, task of all. Um, 
So you have to, uh, with the car, uh, first and uh, then remove the uh, wheels on each side. Um, and then you will have to remove the uh, wheel well on, uh, on each side too, to uh, uh, be able to access the uh, inside and, uh, and the gas tanks. So these uh, gas tanks are, has two halves, which are on uh, yeah, each side of the car, uh, just behind those uh, fender wells. So to remove the fender well, you have, I think, another seven bolts. Um, they are relatively easy to spot. Um, so they are here, three in the back. There is one on top. Uh, they are a couple in the front, too. And there is one below the uh, quarter panel. Uh, when you are going to remove the fender well, the, uh, if it's a 06, you have also the uh, a cooling duct for the brakes uh, that is going to come at the same time that is just with the, uh, uh, with the fender well. So I'm going to see here, I'm removing the last bolt under the quarter panel, and the whole thing comes out with uh, the duct for the... Uh, so uh, disconnect the filler hose for the gas tank uh, so that you can drop the tank. You have uh, one bolt basically in the, or two bolts, yeah, two bolts in the back so that you can remove that cover. When you get that, uh, that cover out, uh, you have access to the fuel line. There are three of them on the driver's side. So look at the procedure on how to, uh, to drain uh, the uh, the tank uh, it's going to take some time so uh, you, um, it's better if your tanks are almost empty before doing that you won't have uh, much uh, to do then plug the lines to uh, prevent any contamination of the fuel system um, so here I'm going to plug the uh, the three lines and uh, yeah make sure you are in a well ventilated area uh, and uh, you don't have no flames nearby when you is going to be a uh, always some uh, gas leaking a bit, so be careful with that. Then so once you are done with that, um, the gas tank is uh, not going to come easily. Actually, you have to raise the car very high. So first you have to remove the hose between the tank. There's a bigger hose uh, that is held by, uh, that you are going to see here, the, those are the two hoses uh, that are linked between the tank and they are on top of the transmission. So it's pretty hard to get there and uh, and, uh, and remove them. Then the tank is going to drop off, but you have to raise the car pretty high to uh, get the tank out. Um, with the lift I have, uh, the jack I have, I try to put uh, a jack on the side, and even at uh, uh, maximum height on the jack, uh, the tank is not going to come out. So um, that was the end of the day there, and I had enough. So. Uh, I, I gave up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to need another strategy to get the, the tank out. It's not going to come. Um, and uh, so before doing that, I'm going to uh, drop the tank on the other side so I can pull both at the same time. So here now we are on the um, passenger side. Um, that's the EVAP canister. Uh, there are two hoses that you will have to remove because anyway, you are, are going to completely remove the EVAP canister. Um, so there are those uh, two nuts here that are holding the uh, evap canister to the uh, to the frame if you do that uh, it, it's pretty tight in there uh, but you will be able to uh, move it out and get it out of the uh, by the, uh, through the hole then same thing you have to drain the uh, passenger side tank uh, once it's drained uh, you can remove the bolt and the tank is going to drop uh, yeah I put um, I tried to collect eventually some gas that could have leaked through the, uh, um, the protector here, but actually nothing, nothing dripped, so I was fine. Um, then you remove uh, all the remaining bolts, and the and the tank is gonna is gonna drop. So the same thing. The tank is not gonna get out easily until the car is uh, raised. So here I tried to uh, raise the car as much as I could with, uh, and uh, that didn't work. So I'm going to put the wheels back on the car and then I put ramps under the wheels so I could uh, raise the car enough on the ramps. Um, and 
Now that the car is on the ramp, uh, I used a higher jack to try to uh, lift the car up, but that was still that still wasn't enough. So uh, I had to put some uh, extra um, pieces of wood to raise uh, the car extra inches so that I could uh, finally uh, get the tanks out. Um, so the car sits actually pretty high in the air here, uh, but with the ramps underneath to secure it, it's. Uh, uh, it makes it less risky for the car to uh, drop one way or the other. Uh, and then you can finally get the tanks out and uh, lower the car. So here is what the two tanks look like with the um, uh, hoses connecting them together in the middle. So those hoses are on top of the transmission. So here we are back in the car now. I did an opening here uh, to access the frame in the back. That's where the... Uh, uh, that's where the main hook for the um, wall cage is gonna is gonna come and sit on the frame here. So I cleaned up the uh, opening there. Once the uh, main hoop is gonna be done, we can re weld the um, metal there in place. So basically, you have to cut uh, next to the uh, to the uh, B pillar there, uh, cut on the side, and do a, a small cut on the top, and then you you can open uh, uh, the uh, it's relatively thin metal, but it's not necessarily very accessible uh, close to the uh, with the pillar there. You don't want to cut in the in the pillar, so you have to take your time and uh, uh, to make the cut here. And my disc was starting to be a little bit small, so I had to go and and change the disc. Uh, couldn't get the end to uh, be cut there. And with the new disc, I was finally able to uh, to finish the cut. And now it's open. So uh, that's where the uh, is gonna look. the uh, main hoop is going to come here down and sit on the frame behind there and go through that opening. Um, and uh, if you look in the back, I made the cut in the fiberglass. That's where the plates are going to be welded in the back for the back of the wall cage. So uh, one of the last steps, uh, I didn't want the uh, head-up display to be damaged when removing the windshield or when working the car. So but to remove the head-up display, you have two bo one bolt on each side and uh, one bolt on the uh, left side underneath there uh, that um, keep it tight to the, uh, to the uh, uh, gauge gauges. Um, so we'll just remove those three bolts and it's going to pop out and uh, the wire harness is actually not helped by, I was trying to look if there's something uh, had to be pressed to remove the uh, the harness, but actually it just, you just have to pull slightly hard and straight and uh, it just pops out, there is nothing uh, keeping the clip in place. And next step is preparing to remove the windshield. So uh, the wipers just are just held by uh, one nut, but it can get uh, pretty hard, so you uh, get some PB blaster in the hole and and move them uh, left and right, and then uh, they will come out. Then uh, we move this uh, support for the uh, for the hood, uh, and then you have five bolts to remove for the uh, uh, windshield uh, cover there, uh, windshield wiper cover. And uh, once you have those five bolts out, the uh, it comes out, and you have to remove the uh, pipes uh, for the uh, windshield wipers uh, sprayer. Um, and uh, that's, you know, I have also two small plastic supports uh, from the factory to put the uh, windshield in place. Then you have to remove the weather stripping on either side, and uh, there are a large number of bolts uh, that uh, keep the thing in place. So you have a small metal piece first, and so the uh, uh, plastic molding. Uh, the amount of glue behind uh, varies. I had much less glue on the driver's side than I had on the on the passenger side. Um, so be careful and uh, take your time when prying the uh, the moldings. Uh, a bunch of uh, um, screws can be hidden by uh, the glue. So uh, be careful to uh, uh, scrape all the glue and try to find all the bolts. Uh, all those screws. If you have a doubt and you already removed one side, uh, go and check how many uh, screws you had on the other side. That's what I'm going to do here, looking at uh, all the openings that have uh, uh, screws and uh, remove them on the uh, 
passenger side, everything was completely uh, covered with glue everywhere, so you have to scrape that before you can... Uh, it looks more like co coke uh, than glue. We also looked at uh, removing directly the roof, uh, but it's uh, glued so badly around uh, both the uh, uh, B pillars, the back, and uh, the front with the windshield that I decided against it and uh, just go and, and remove the windows instead, uh, so the front windshield and the rear window. In any case, whether you remove uh, just the windshield or the windows, you have to remove all that weather stripping uh, on the side. And uh, the last thing to be able to remove the front windshield is uh, to take the bolts, the four front bolts on each fender so that you can slightly open the fenders to pry them to get the tool uh, behind the windshield to uh, uh, scrape the um, glue behind the windshield. I hope that was helpful. Check uh, the progress on our roll cage on our website. Thanks.